Hi, my name is Mike Allison. I'm a senior director in the NAND product planning team of Samsung, where I will focus on standards. Today, I'm going to talk about NVM Express's host managed live migration capability. Before I begin and talk about the live migration capabilities, let's look at some of the use cases that drive the development. So the first we're gonna talk about is balancing workloads within the data center. For simplicity, I'm doing very simple diagrams showing one or two servers. Um, in my examples, uh, the servers will have one NVM subsystem um, in there that has multiple controllers attached. Those controllers could be um, physical functions, SRIOV, because when we're developing live migration, we're trying to make it independent of the controller type. Within the host side of it, we're gonna have a hypervisor that's connected to a controller and the hypervisor is managing the virtual machines. There could be one or more virtual machines deployed to a server. Um, those, server those virtual machines will have one attached namespace and there will be namespaces attached to the controllers and they'll be given storage capacity. There's also gonna be some controllers or NVM uh, that are not deployed at the present time. And you'll see where you see the X's, that means that they're not either deployed or they're not actually doing work at this present time. So let's just say a customer calls you up with a new workload and that new workload, not only does it need a VM and a controller, but it also has capacity associated with it. And as you look out at your data center and across your servers, you see that the new capacity does not fit in the existing free capacity on any server. So what live migration is going to allow you to do then is to migrate a VM the controller being used by that VM and the storage from one server to the next to balance workloads um, to make room for new workloads requests from customers like this example. So I we migrated the purple workload over from one server on the left to the server on the right. And then as you can see, the new capacity fits within the st free storage capacity of the server on the left. And so the workload can be deployed. Another use case is just normal hardware maintenance. So in the deployment of the data center, let's say we have this distribution of virtual machines across two servers. And the goal is to, that the server on the left requires maintenance and we need to bring the whole server down. So just like what was done for the new workload, you could take a VM, start migrating it off the server on the left and migrating it over to another server. Um, but we want to be scalable in live migration, so we don't need. We're going to develop it such that you can do a multiple at the same time. So you're free to migrate all of the VMs um, appropriately to um, anywhere you want, and the server on the right in this case. So let's talk about now host managed live migration. That phrase host manage is very important because the host is doing most of the work. In fact, all NVM Express is doing is providing services to the host. One service is to get the state and the next service is to put the state. Typically when you're migrating, what happens is um, you get a static set of state and you start copying over the static. Then while that static's being copied and the VM's running, you monitor any changes to that state you then migrate the changes and you reiterate over the migrating of the changes. And then at some point in time, you say stop processing stuff so you can get the final copy of the state. You get the state and then you can put the state on the other side. So there's multiple iterations. And when we say get state, it could be the initial state. It could be dynamic state um, and what, um, or it could be the final state. And we'll walk through the various services that are provided. So with that, let's talk about the source NVM subsystem first. So I'm gonna do a simple diagram as I said before, but I'm only gonna show one VM. This VM is the VM that we're migrating. Um, it has a namespace and then that namespace are allocated LBAs that already exist. Um, that's by the purple within the namespace and anything that's white within the namespace is deallocated or logical blocks that have never been written. So 
when we're thinking about the static initial conditions of the namespace and to copy it over, um, you have to be able to take a static view of the namespace. And we don't, just don't want to copy the whole namespace. We want to actually copy real allocated LBA logical blocks. I'll say LBAs or logical blocks intermittently. It's just normal habits. So I'll try to be careful to use logical blocks going forward. So one of the things that NVM Express did is we already ratified a new technical proposal, uh, TP4165, tracking LBA allocations with granularity. And what it does is it allows the host to do a request that says, hey, I want you to report the alloc allocated LBAs of a namespace. The controller will th or then return those logical blocks that were actually allocated and it's going to return it in a, a set of ranges of LBAs, a start LBA and a length, which happen to line up with a read command. So if that hypervisor then wanted to read the namespace to collect the data um, of what's actually allocated, it can. What we have found is that the reason this isn't included in the host managed live migration technology or the proposal that we're working on now is it could be used for other use cases like snapshots. So if you're just taking a snapshot of a namespace, it would be really nice just to read the allocated logical blocks and not copy the whole namespace. Once you have the static view of the, the namespace, now we have to deal with dynamic changes of the logical blocks. So for example, if you got a direct attached PCIe SSD, the VM is live making changes, then we need to log what logical blocks are being changed by the VM as the VM is running to those, so those LBAs can be copied over because they've changed after we've gotten the allocated logical blocks from the previous step that we talked about. So to do the logical blocks, we're gonna have the host create what we're calling a migration queue in the host memory. And once he has allocated some memory for that queue, he's going to send down a command to the controller that says, hey, create a migration queue from the controller point of view. In that command, that command is going to identify the, v the controller attached to the VM that we want to migrate. This is a different controller. So with live, migra um, live migration, there are multiple controllers involved. And this presentation is trying to make it clear as to which controllers being talked to for the new commands and which controllers are being managed as part of the operation. So because we created a migration queue from the controller point of view, this queue looks is very similar to an IO completion queue. There is an association from the migration queue to the controller that is being monitored for logical block changes. And there will be a head pointer where the head is where things that are reported as being changed that the hypervisor can pull off, get those changes and deal with them. And there's a tell pointer that the controller uses to place new entries of, of logical block changes. So the next thing is after you've done all that, the hypervisor has to say, start logging, start logging on that uh, controller for any logical blocks that have changed. And so now, that it's enabled, if an IO write comes in, comes in and changes allocation of uh, namespaces or deallocations of namespaces, but in this case, I'm showing allocations, the um, control or the namespace and the controller is gonna push those changes into, as an entry into that queue and then move the tail pointer. Now I'm just gonna show one um, instance of an LBA change going into the queue, but for every time the uh, namespace is changed, um, entries can be placed in there. Now, controllers are gonna be able to aggregate changes or whatever to minimize the number of changes. We're not really, we're leaving some freedom on the implementation. Um, once that um, is in there, the host can also send down a command that says, I've processed that entry and there's a, a new set feature that's going to tell the controller, hey, move the head pointer down because I've dealt with some of the entries in the queue, and that's how the head pointer moves down. So very similar to the IO completion queue in terms of head and tail, posting and uh, pulling items off of the queue. 
So the next thing we want to do is look at a, a DPU case where the controllers um, that are attached to the virtual machines are actually DPUs and they're using NVMe over fabrics. And by that, I mean, is there is no direct attached namespace. So in this case, um, there's only a controller um, and we don't have to move the namespaces. But in this instance, they also want to track the changes to the VM's host memory by the controller due to processing commands. And those processing of commands can be either admin commands or IO commands. So what we're doing there is the hypervisor could come in and say, I want to start logging changes for, for host memory changes done by the controller attached to the virtual machine, that command is going to provide a set of memory ranges that can be tracked. Um, and then what happens is when a command like an IO read command comes in, and then the read takes data from the namespace and posts it into host memory, that um, the NVM subsystem has to remember those changes relative to the request that started it. Then later, the hypervisor can come in and say, hey, I want to query any of those changes that have occurred dynamically to the VM. And then the controller can take those changes and report them to the hypervisor. And once they're reported, then those changes can be removed unless new cha uh, memory changes happen in the same locations that were already reported. Now, we talked about the namespace. But now we're going to add a command that says, hey, I want to go read the controller state. That is the controller connected to the virtual machine. And so the command's going to come in. And when that data is responded to, there's going to be two types of data returned to the hypervisor. There's going to be state on items that are defined by NVMe. Um, and then there's going to be a way to do vendor specific data. We're architecting the vendor specific data to have a unique identifier. So that way, um, it could somewhere outside the scope of NVMe, it could be documented what that looks like. And so if we want to have interoperability, there's a way to do vendor specific um, way to understand the data that's going back and forth. And finally, now that we've gotten the controller state, we need to be able to pause the controller. So we're adding a command that will come in to the controller and the hypervisor to say, hey, that controller over on the VM that I'm trying to migrate, I want to pause it. And what pausing is doing is just causing that controller to stop fetching commands, any command that has already been fetched, to process it to completion. And then after it's being completed, um, then that you know that that controller is no more making any state changes, nor is making any namespace changes. And those are the services on the source side. So let's go over again, and let's start talking about on the target system. So on the target system, um, I have another simple view here. Um, I'm showing that the namespace has already been migrated. They did the allocation, uh, the static allocation. They played back all the LBAs that have changed. And so I'm not going to focus on that because the hypervisor just does reads and writes, creates a namespace and does reads and writes. But now what we have to do is that controller state that we got from the source server, we now have to place that state into this controller that we want to move for the migration of the purple virtual machine that we're trying to do. I'm also in this example, assuming that the controller um, that we're migrating to is in the po initially pause state. Um, we have some various states we're gonna allow for that controller to be in, but for this example, we're showing that the controller is paused. And so what's gonna happen is there's just a command that says, go set the state. And that state that was read out can be put it in. Now, these controllers can be really complicated and the size of the controller data uh, or the, um, the size of the controller state data can be very large and it may require more than one command. So we're allowing the hypervisor to be able to send a sequence of commands to set the controller state. Once the controller state was set, you'll saw that I call it, colored it purple 
And that's because now it should be the same state as the purple um, controller that we had on the source side. And then once we're there, we're ready to do the resume operation. But part of migration is also migrating the actual virtual machine. So it's the host responsibility to make sure that the virtual machine was migrated from the source server over to this target server. So once we have all the purple colors all migrated over, the states set, the namespace copied, we then can send down a command that comes in and says, hey, resume operations. And, when, uh, and all this does is tells that controller, hey, start fetching commands. And part of the controller state is the head and tail pointers of the queues. Um, assuming the queues are in the host memory of the VM, then those it was also copied over. So we just start processing commands where we left off. And those uh, queues that come over are not only the submitted commands, but also the completions that have happened because the host could pause the VM and then send the pause to the controller, in which case the controller is still gonna push out completions because he has to flush out all of the fetched commands to completions and post those completions. So that's the high level view and the focus of the services and talking about the different controllers and what's um, being reported and used by the different controllers, which was my target today. Um, I did say before that we're trying for the rating and writing of the actual um, LBA data, we're expecting normal read and write commands to be used for that. And also any transfer of this data, both the namespace or the controller state, is totally outside of the NVMe specification. And just want to leave it at that because we just deal with a single NVM subsystem today in NVM Express. The other thing I want to say is I wasn't able to provide you all of the names of the new commands and provide the details of uh, the data structures and, and all of that. That's being done right now. We're not done yet ratifying. So I'm limited to just give an overview. Um, I'm expecting that by the time the SNEA SDC 2024 conference comes, um, it'll be ratified. And I'm, I'm planning on submitting a session there where I will plan to bring the full stop of everything, define everything, show you the commands, show you the features, show you other things that have changed, uh, anything to do with resets, events, stuff like that. So with that, I thank you for your time and I hope you have a great day today. Thank you.